So I would predict that it's likely we're going to have a higher population of stink bugs and bean leaf beetles this summer. You'd be surprised how many Iowa fields are infected with bean pod modifiers. Actually, I would always include an insecticide if you're going to make that pass at R3, uh, but definitely this year. Hi, my name is Jake Boston Kemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here in Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. Dr. Jake, we were supposed to do this video on Tuesday. It was a lot warmer, a lot nicer, but it's okay today. Um, it's been a lot warmer the last four or five months, and what's this warm winter going to do and impact for farmers? Well, Katie, as we kind of prepare for the 24 crop, you know, one thing, the warmer, the normal winter, I'd be thinking about what's insect pressure going to look like. And I think it's important that we understand, you know, we looked up December was the seventh warmest December on record here in the Quad Cities. And in general, it was warm. So what bugs should we be thinking about that over winter when it's warmer? Yeah, so the two economic pests that we got to really worry about that are largely affected by winter temperatures are bean leaf beetles and stick bugs, okay? And I think it's it's important to understand that this is this has set itself up for what could be a problem uh, because last winter was warmer than normal winter. I noticed higher populations of stink bugs last summer. That means we had a larger than normal population overwintering, and we didn't have a very cold winter, meaning the mortality rate was relatively low. So I would predict that it's likely we're going to have a higher population of stink bugs and bean leaf beetles this summer. Okay, so bean leaf beetles themselves can do a lot of economic damage by feeding on the seeds at the end of the season, okay? But I think it's also important to understand there's something else going on with bean leaf beetles, and that's called bean pod model virus. So bean leaf beetles are a vector of this virus called bean pod model virus. There was some excellent work done at your alma mater, Iowa State, I hate to admit that, but there was some excellent work done, I believe it was back in the early 2000s, really great research. While I was there. While you were there. <laughs> and what they found is that in general, you'd be surprised how many Iowa fields are infected with bean pod model virus. Well, we saw that and we've got a video that we did. Um, we can link that down in the description. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you would be surprised how many fields are actually infected with bean pod model virus. So don't seed treatments help with those bean leaf beetles, Jake? Yes, so, yes, and that's kind of what I wanted to get to. So, so seed treatments do help a lot with bean leaf beetles and I, I, I want to make it clear that the little bit of feeding that bean leaf beetles are doing at B2, B3, they're not doing any economic defoli defoliation at that point, right? But the economic damage they're doing is the vectoring of the bean pod model virus. And what we know from that great research done at Iowa State is that when soybeans get infected with bean, with bean pod model virus early, there's a much higher detriment to yield than if they get infected late. Is okay. one insecticide, you know, there's a couple of different insecticides on the market primarily used inside seed treatments. Is one better than the other or are they both pretty good? I, I, I think protection. I think both of the common insecticides that we use have, have really pretty good control on bean leaf beetle. And that's why we ask people to use the insecticide. It's not so much the feeding up front, it's what's going, the damage being done on yeah, the backside. Yeah, I, I think that's the core reason why when you see yield increase from insecticide, that's probably why in soybean. Um, or the most common reason. Why. Sure. Um, but what I would really even think about is seed treatments are great. And, and that Iowa State research showed that seed treatments can be very effective for bean leaf beetle and bean pod model virus. But, but insecticides don't last forever, right? And, and seed treatment insecticides don't last forever. They're systemic. They get up into the plant. You know, they last for a few weeks. And then the plant gets big enough. The insecticide gets diluted. They're no longer effective. Right. I would recommend strongly considering a insecticide application, a, you know, a, a cost-effective pyrethroid with your post-application in soybean. Because that's, what that's going to do is it's going to extend your insecticidal activity on those bean leaf beetles. What about the beneficials though, Jake? There's always, IPM, right? there's always the concern about IPM. And of course, honestly, you should go scout and you can see bean leaf beetles early on. No yeah. doubt, you should go scout before you spray. Um, that doesn't get done a lot, but that's what should be done. Um, so if you're not going to scout, it, it's something that I would consider. Maybe, maybe at the time we can do some videos. Sure. Say, you know, it, what, was what I to, right? Do we have high bean leaf beetle pressure? Because we could do that. That's actually a great idea. Well, this isn't Elite Academy here, so um, <laughs> we do need to talk a little bit about your favorite bug in the whole world, stink bugs. Well, bean leaf beetles are actually more of a favorite, but stink bugs, yes. Yeah, stink bugs can be highly economically damaging to soybean. 
particularly at that R3 time period uh, when we're applying a fungicide. And I, I have a feeling they're gonna have, we're gonna have a higher population of those too. So if you're gonna apply a fungicide at R3, I would definitely include an insecticide. Actually, I would always include an insecticide if you're gonna make that pass at R3, uh, but definitely this year. How about stink bugs in corn? Is it, what should you be looking for? Where's the damage show up? Stink bugs can damage corn early. Um, they can, you, you know, as you, as the, as the, as the leaf unfurls, you know, oftentimes you'll see a hole and you'll see some injury around that hole from the piercing sucking mouth parts. Um, probably the more economic damage comes when we start to have seed set, they'll stick their uh, piercing sucking mouth parts in the seed and you'll literally see a little hole in the developing seed. Usually there's a black halo around that hole. We can put some pictures up to show you what that looks like. Sure. Um, but. They can definitely be damaged in corn, but I think the bigger impact comes to soybean. And I think that's partially because they prefer soybean. But they can definitely be a pest to corn too. Any other comments for today, Jake? Like you said, Katie, it's not a Lead Academy, Lead Academy video. We could go on for this about a while. So uh, what I'll say right now is good luck planting because it's getting ready to happen. Yeah, you must have Ella doing all your dirty work today since you're wearing that white shirt. That's right. We wouldn't want to get that dirty. So anyway, for all the folks out there, hope you're having a great week. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow. Oh my gosh, is that a spray plane, Jake? It looks like it. They're probably spraying wheat. Oh. I would guess. Or they're just practicing, getting her tuned up. Maybe. You think they're spraying for stink bugs? No. <laughs>